So, Alankrita, firstly, a warm welcome to you on Filmy Shilmi and congratulations on Bombay Begums. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be chatting with you. Yeah, me too. Finally, I've been wanting to speak with you for a long time, actually. In fact, you know, Alankrita, you have always shown the lives of multiple women who have kind of discovered themselves and their desires and their dreams and ambitions amidst a kind of patriarchal society in films like Lipstick Under My Burka. So what kind of... um. I guess, in a way, made you explore similar themes in Bombay Begums? Um, I mean, I don't know the bomb. I mean, uh, I guess overall the themes are, uh, I guess the themes of all of my work kind of overlaps in a certain sense. But for Bombay Begums, I think uh, what I have tried to examine is the idea of ambition in urban um, working women of uh, a particular social strata. Uh, living in a met, you know, in 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 a metropolitan uh, city, and what it means to um, have that pressure to succeed at your workplace, and also uh, still have the pressure of uh, keeping it all together in your personal and domestic life. So it's like that competing thing between your personal life and your professional life. So that's something I've tried to sort of examine, and also the idea that uh, how you know uh, for women. Uh, even taking decisions in the professional sphere or the body often becomes like an element in that decision making. Um, or mm-hmm. it's something that one is always kind of factoring in. Uh, so in all the five characters of Wombi Begums, one sort of sees that the youngest characters, you know, on the verge of puberty, the oldest character Rani is uh, uh, on the verge of menopause. Uh, Fatima's character played by Shahana, she's, you know, dealing with feeling like her body is not, uh, uh, you know, she's not being able to produce children. And um, Lily is is a bar dancer who's now thinking about giving up like sex work and bar dancing, um, and uh, and basically is not using her body anymore for her work. And Aisha, you know, who's uh, trying to figure out her sexuality and also deals with uh, ends up having to deal with uh, you know harassment at the workplace. So I I, mm-hmm. I just wanted to explore uh, this idea of what it means to be a working woman, uh, you know, in, uh, India, but it's more than that, of course, because it's also about like being of, a, of different ages and, uh, reflecting on, on sort of that journey of being a woman and the kind of choices one has to make. So, right. Yeah. yeah. In fact, um, I was going to say, cause recently we had, um, the morning show, uh, which kind of shows women breaking free from a patriarchal work environment and sort of, I guess, overcoming, um, you know, sexual misconduct in a professional environment too. Um, and obviously, uh, Bombay Begum sort of addresses, you know, similar sort of issues and uh, themes that we perhaps encounter on a daily basis too. Um, so through the medium of entertainment, what sort of conversations would you like to have emerged from Bombay Begum's? And do you think um, perhaps cinema as a whole can ever act as a catalyst towards implementing social change of any kind? Um, you know, I'll take your second question first. Um, I definitely think cinema can't change the world, like a show or a film can't change the world, but it can definitely get people thinking and uh, it can start conversations. It can get people reflecting on themselves and their own choices. Um, and just looking at things from a different point of view, I think that um, is, I think, something interesting that uh, you know, cinema uh, can achieve. So I think, um, I don't know, um, you know, what people will really take away from Bombay Begums, but definitely I think this, what I would really like is for uh, for women to feel, you know, working women to feel like they can see a piece of their own journey, you know, in the show, or they can see something of themselves reflected um, uh, in the series. And maybe it'll give them like food for thought in terms of thinking of like, should I have done this differently? Or maybe I did like some choices that I made, should I have made some sort of different choices? Um, that kind of a thing. And um, uh, and I think overall for people to just uh, get like a slightly deeper insight into what it means uh, to be a working woman in uh, uh, a city in India, you know, like just mm. having more empathy maybe than- uh, you know, by watching the show uh, for, for, for people who are having to deal with like various uh, sort of aspects, because otherwise sometimes we just tend to sort of box people in and never think about uh, what's really going on with them. 
So I think if mm. people can feel with the characters, feel their heartbreak, feel their joy, feel their triumph, feel their defeat, I think uh, you know I would feel quite fulfilled. Absolutely, yes, very well said as well. And I think you know because you've always told stories that provide a mirror to society. Um, you know, even Dolly Kitty, for example, for that matter, too. Um, what is your opinion on the whole notion of women telling women's stories? I mean, do you think, I mean, to what extent does gender determine the way a story is told? Like, perhaps, for example, if uh, a male filmmaker now was to make a film like Dolly Kitty or Lipstick or even um, Bobby Begum, for that matter, does gender necessarily uh, change the way a story is told or how compelling it is? I think definitely it does <clears throat> because uh, I feel uh, I wonder whether any male filmmaker would have come up with uh, you know a film like Lipstick or Dolly Kitty mm. um, they may have gotten a script if somebody had written it and given it to them but I th- there's a lived reality of being being a woman in India and uh, I don't think that a man has that kind of lived experience there might be a lot of empathy and I think some male filmmakers, they have a very sensitive gaze and uh, they might do a lot of justice to the material. But by and large, I feel like there is something clearly like the female gaze is a real thing. And uh, mm. it's in how you deal with actors, how you film them, how your way of looking at them is not from the outside in, but from the inside out. And the kind of um, sensitivity and empathy with which you sort of look at the characters without judgment. And again, I I mean, of course, it's not like all women filmmakers have a very uh, clear and strong female gaze. Mm. But uh, by and large, I think, um, you know, so that's not a given also. But by and large, I feel like uh, being a woman, of course, changes how you see the world, how you've experienced the world, and therefore plays a large part in how you're looking at characters and um, sort of, you know, letting those characters breathe and develop. And like I said, there are always exceptions. There are many women who may not have that kind of a gaze and there are many men who might be very, very um, um, sort of sensitive. But I I, I really do believe in the female gaze. Um, Mm. And I think that it's very important for women to tell women's stories because I think we've spent decades and decades and decades where all stories have been told by men. Cinema has completely been molded by men. Mm, um, right. So women have actually not had a bigger part to play in the creation of cinematic language or format or any in in that sense. They've not had their say and their voices have not been heard. So I feel, uh, if not now, then when? Uh, you know, and I definitely think that uh, you know, there is something about women telling women's stories. It's important. It's crucial. And at the same time, I feel there are many women filmmakers who may not feel interested or compelled um you know to tell a story about a women about women and that's absolutely fine and they should go ahead and tell the stories that they want uh, to with whatever kind of protagonist you know whether it's a male superhero film they want to make or mm. um just generally make a, a male protagonist and that's absolutely fine i think that freedom should be there so i don't feel women should be burdened either with the idea that they must tell women's stories Mm. But I think um, there's something about women telling women's stories. It's important and critical. Right. And in fact, there used to be a time when uh, feminine characters, especially in, in, in Hindi cinema in particular, they were split between two extremes. And I kind of uh, spoke with Shahana about this as well. And her perspective really kind of uh, was fascinating to hear. And I would like to hear your perspective on it actually as well. Um, so there was split between two extremities. They would have the, you know, meek ones, the shy gopivo type ones and then you'd have the sort of like downright evil ones so and there would never be real characters which I feel Bombay Begums is a step towards that direction in terms of portraying real characters. Johanna has said not to use the word grey anymore so I'm consciously making a sort of a conscious effort to use the word real instead of grey uh, here uh, but why do you think it's kind of taken uh, Indian cinema to portray such representations in terms of the real characters and what do you think has kind of contributed towards this shift in representation as well? I think the reason there hasn't been this representation is simply because there haven't been enough women behind the camera so I think without having enough women um, um, directing without enough women making films and writing films and producing films and series uh, it's not possible which is why I'm saying that the reason that representation of women has been so uh, skewed 
because i think women have really been represented from the, from male eyes which is why you have like the you know culture of the item song which is like just a pathetic term but basically a woman who's just dancing and she's just an object of desire with no sort of connection with uh, you know the the narrative Mm. and the way she's kind of filmed with all these men pawing her and you're just shooting filming parts of her body like it just makes no sense no and then uh, you have like the you know the virginal love the pure uh, you know that pure girl who's like you know just waiting for like the hero and she's the person to be kind of be loved and she has to be very pure and virgin virginal and then you have you know the the mother who, or the you know, the aunt who's a very sacrificing kind of person and hold the whole duties only to the family so everyone's in these kind of boxes and or then there's a vamp who's very supposedly loose and she's like a vixen and you know seductress and all of that and she's always wicked and all of that so that is how it was just suiting a very patriarchal perspective to have keep women in these boxes in terms uh. of representation because that's what men want in a certain sense in mm. terms of what serves patriarchy to yeah. have women in these kind of different boxes and the reason the only reason for for the change is when there are enough women who are going to tell stories and they're going to be like no women are not like this and you cannot box us like this mm. so mm. i think change can only come from more representation and i feel that leads not just to women changing how they are portraying women it leads overall to a shift in terms of the portrayal of women because when there are enough films being made where women are being portrayed differently then it automatically kind of percol- percolates everywhere so i feel there's a shift now simply because there are more women making films mm-hmm. and that has led to even ma- some male filmmakers you know becoming more sensitive towards female characters Sure, absolutely, very well said. And I think on a final note, quickly before I wrap up, um, having explored themes of coming of age, womanhood, and self discovery, um, which, as you said, sometimes a lot of your themes kind of overlap, uh, in in a few of your contents. So, what type of cinema are you most interested in working in now, and how can we kind of see that translate in your next or forthcoming projects? Oh my God, that's such a tough question. I don't really <laughs> know feature film wise what I'm making next. um uh to be very honest and um i don't think i can ever give up this theme of self discovery and you know like finding one self coming of age kind of thing because i feel every time i think of any story any uh, kind of a uh, female character i always think of her as being in one place at the beginning of the story and through whatever happens she reaches another place at the end of the story so uh, i i'm not sure that you know that <laughs> that can really sort of um change but of course the worlds and situations and all of those will um sort of change and someone had said this that most filmmakers they continue to make the same film again and again and i think maybe that's definitely true of me because i think there is certainly there, there are certainly some things i'm kind of drawn to and i want to would like to continue exploring them Right. No, but I'm looking forward to that and uh, a huge congratulations on Bob Mbegum. So I can't wait for people to stream it on Netflix when it releases on International Women's Day, uh, which is Monday, uh, 8th of March. So I can't wait for people to stream it and congrats and uh, wishing you all the very best Alankrita. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much Anuj. It was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>